And hello everybody, it's SID Madhaven here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the TP-50 prototype. This is a Polish Tier 8 premium tank that came out probably about two years ago. Honestly, this tank, whenever it first came out, everyone was calling it the Polish Defender. And well, it earned its name, and I gotta say, it, it matches the title. So, starting off, let's go ahead and jump straight into the modules here. So the engine... You have 14.33 horsepower to ton, 750 overall. Your top speed at 35. This is a pretty fast, super heavy for a tier 8. However, there are lots of weak points. Top reverse speed at 14 kilometers per hour is actually fantastic. Being able to go 14 in reverse, it's going to help you out in a lot of situations in the long run. The 20% fire chance, your fuel tanks are not exactly that big. They're all located in the back. So the main block right there, that is the engine. Off to the left and right, that is your fuel tank. Side scraping, you can get overmatched occasionally and be set on fire. It's not too bad though, you can handle it. <laughs> no problems. Your base reload is at 15.7, which is kind of a big fat slap to the face for this tank. Not just that, the aim time of 3.2 seconds. Ooh, it's getting even worse. Max accuracy, so gun dispersion values at 0.44. Oh, Man, it's just killing you already. Stacked on top, you get 370 view range, which is probably one of the lowest for the tier 8 category, except for a couple of Russians out there with 360 to 370. So this tank does match up pretty well for the tiers that it plays. And the benefits. Here we go. 20 degrees of max elevation, 10 degrees of max gun depression. 10 degrees of max gun depression, keep in mind, you only get 7 degrees off the front of the tank. So you have to aim over the side of your track here in order to get the full effect of your 10 degrees of gun depression. Now, even though you have a gun dispersion value of 0.44 and a aiming time of 3.2, your damage with this gun is up there. We'll get into that here in a second. But next up, the track's 28 degrees. 28 degrees, It's you're going to feel it lacking a little bit, especially on that soft terrain. But whenever you go to hard and medium terrain at the 1.2 and 1.5, it, it's going to feel really nice. Overall, this tank is more of a ridgeline fighter, side scraper, not really much of a heavy brawler. You can take it in for heavy brawling. The armor, it's all over the place. It ricochets in multiple angles, but you do have a pike nose. So whenever you're pulling around a corner, they can shoot the side of the pike and go straight through it. Now, jumping over the turret. As I said, 370 view range, best way to counteract that's going to be binoculars or coated optics or a well-trained crew. Either way, premium consumables with everything else stacked on top of it, you can get about a 440 to 470 additional, well, overall view range. Which, yeah, that's, that's going to that's gonna make a big difference. Your radio at 525, primarily assist damage, we will jump into that later in the future, whenever I get more people to volunteer to jump inside a private match and we can go over signal range spotting camouflage and a ton of other things ammunition your standard shells are ap with 1007 meters per second now one of the biggest things i love about the polish defender the 50 tp prototype is that it has apcr for its premium rounds with over 1257 meters per second those rounds are fast and they have really good penetration at 245. However, against tier 9s and tier 10s, 245 you will find lacking just a tad bit. So keep an eye out for weak spots, lower plates in some tanks, even at 245 of armor penetration. Sometimes there are lower plates out there that have more armor than you do penetration as a tier 8, especially 245. For instance, the AMX-54, the newer tank the newer tier 10 which is the andre the giant its effective lower plate is about 270 to 250 and if you're shooting at him on a slight down slope so he's driving down a hill just a little bit about two degrees off its lower lower plate that's only 125 millimeters becomes impenable it is an auto ricochet now the armor of this tank we have 270 on the gun mantle it's going to really help out for well, honestly, overmatching. Primarily, really nice and thick. Your downfall is going to be your 210. It kind of flattens out near the front, and they can go through that. 
down near the lower part of the turret it is a little bit flat and if you're not well angled right or aiming down a hill at your maximum of 10 degrees they will shred right through that armor so keep in mind 50 TP overall strong tank capable of taking a beating and giving one back your driver's position in the front only has 170 millimeters of armor so flat on it's going to be a weak spot but you get a little bit of gun depression stacked on top of that it's going to jump a lot so rather than the 220 effective that it has starting off it's going to jump to around 270 to 260 premium shells are still going to mow right through it unless you can hit the auto bounce angles at 10 degrees but if you're doing 10 degrees off the front well you can't shoot your target because you only get seven off the front now jumping over to the side armor here well the frontal hall first at 110 but look at the angle the angle of the frontal hall is your best friend that is just nice slanted with a pike facing straight on all the time your lower plate is also at 110 it's got a nice decent angle to it but lower plate is still a weak spot now your side armor of 90 millimeters side scraping inside of this tank is a little bit tricky you can pull it off and at the same time you can't every once in a while you're just going to have a shell that's going to go right through because you're over angled a tad bit you know 100 millimeters of armor and 88 millimeters of armor this acts more like a medium side scraper than it does a heavy side scraper now jumping over to the gun 80 millimeters of armor now okay th this is something i just want to throw out there when your gun has more than let's say 45 millimeters of armor it can absorb shells which means the 80 millimeters of armor on the gun itself when you are in a head-to-head -head fight against another tank and you are brawling against them just put your gun inside their gun so you aim in and then you just aim at their gun that's all you got to do and then when they fire you can even ricochet a tier 10 but keep in mind you are you the chances of you breaking your gun are very high but, trade-off is, you took no damage and you're going to survive the brawl. Now, your tracks are only 20 millimeters, so the absorption, they're not going to absorb a lot of damage. They're going to be broken pretty easily with like 105s to the 120s to maybe even a 90 mil. It might take two shots from a 90, but the bonus here is the 10 millimeters of spaced armor. Now, one of the things I'm just going to throw out again is going to be your 90 millimeters of side armor there's a reason why I say over angling in this tank can really hurt you 10 millimeters of spaced armor allows AP shells to readjust by 5 degrees and then if they avoid the tracks completely and then they hit the 90 degrees they're going to readjust again by another 5 degrees which means a total of 10 degrees of readjusting the angle which means if you need a 10 degree angle to ricochet and you're at a 25 degree angle they're gonna go through every single time with AP now I do have a replay for you today it's not an ace tanker but I felt like it was deserving of popping up as the replay Kasserine I probably completely bombed that name I have problems pronouncing these Now, this was a match that we were kind of trying out something new. You know, as the game is slowly getting older, it's getting rid of the hit its 8th year or 7th year here on console, I find the matchmaking to still be extremely healthy. There's a lot of things going on. And with all the events coming out, yesterday I did a live stream for the Monster Hunter event. Honestly, near the end of the stream I started to get really tired Work's been uh, hitting me a little bit harder. There's been a lot more demand, and with what's going on at the borders right now, it's harder to get parts in. But we're getting by. Now, Casserine, probably bombed the name. Let me know in the comments if I did. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, it's it's a good map. So, starting off, 50 TP, we are running 
gun rammer, improved ventilation, and vertical stabilizers to help counteract the gun dispersion values of 0.44. Now, I wasn't really wanting to take this match too serious. I was just screwing around. We just got a guy that joined the party, Dread. And in the last match, he joined us, and, well, we just decided to rush right in and go completely nuts. However, the outcome of this match, in a really weird position, surprised me. Just being able to pop up and use that 10 degrees of gun depression off of the 50 TP here was phenomenal. A lot of unsuspecting victims coming up. Now, occasionally, I do come to this spot right dead center on encounter. But, usually I try to avoid it inside heavy tanks, but with the 10 degrees that the Polish defender is capable of giving you, coming up and aiming off your side, that there's a lot that can be done. So, we're doing a lot of spotting even though we're not running vertical stabilizers. The armor itself, on the turret, even from a side angle, can ricochet a pretty good amount of shells. And less than a minute and 30 seconds in the match, we've already gotten two shots out for 885. And a high roll there for 532. Now, the standard damage of this gun is 440. Your AP rounds only get 218 armor penetration, which is a little bit lower compared to most, and also higher compared to most. It's more of a middle ground tank. A lot of the newer tanks that are coming out have anywhere between 220 to 225 to even 232. But the 50 TP Proto, it's sitting right dab smack in the middle with 218. Downfall, the premium rounds are 245. There's a lot of other tier 8s out there that can get over 280 to 260 armor penetration with their premium rounds. So you're lacking a tad bit on the penetration but you're not lacking in the damage one bit. The high explosives inside this tank, I do like to take a couple of them because if you can get them through, they have 68 millimeters of armor pin and along with that, 560 alpha. So, occasionally you get that one lucky shot off and you hit somebody really hard. So far, I think the highest I've seen roll off one of mine, eh, I'd probably say about 630. And... <laughs> Man, whenever you see those hit and they hit, oh, yeah. Now, Borsig here, I, I thought about loading a high explosive, but with that 12 second reload that you have, even with a fully trained crew, gun rammer and ventilation, it, it's not really worth switching a shell, making you reload for six seconds longer. So I was like, you know what, he's probably going to be backing off anyways, let's just keep unloading the regular AP in. And here we go, VK100. Now, even though we were at a slight angle that should have been a ricochet, because of the spaced armor along with the additional armor, the 10 degrees of overmatching is what made that shell go right through. In any other tank with a flat 90 degree, flat 90 millimeters of armor, that would have just ricocheted. But because the 50 TP has additional spaced armor on the side, of course, it's going to help slow down heat rounds and decrease penetration by 5%, or even help stop high explosives against AP rounds. It's going to be playing against you. APCR being shot in the side of this as well will readjust by 4 degrees, but depending on the penetration, it might just bounce or get absorbed. And already looking at 3,000 damage. Now, our, our team is extremely widespread. They are all over the place. There was no organization whatsoever. And we're just trying our best to hold on. Now, 7 degrees of gun depression out the front. Even though it's only 7 degrees, 7 degrees is still a lot of gun depression. Plus, using the environment to your advantage to get the additional gun depression. One of the best ways to do it. I honestly think you can take any tank and make it a good tank if you know the environment of a map. So what I'm doing is we're making it to where the armor is thicker by driving up and then reversing onto the back rock to give us the additional gun depression that we need. And we are taken out of the match 
within the first five minutes and 20 seconds. But within that five minutes and 20 seconds, we ripped out 5,010 damage. And we only ricocheted 880. Now, this is just a ton of blah that's going to go on. So, I'm not going to be mean to these guys. They did play a good match. But a lot of the decision making, it, it could have been better. If there was more communication within game chat, probably would have made a big difference. And it's a feat. But trade off is we got a high caliber, second class mastery, and I'm really close to getting my second mark on this tank. So, the Polish Defender, the 50 TP Proto, this is one of those tanks that I occasionally pull it out just to have some fun, have a blast. Now, even though it's getting stacked up against tier 10s at the moment and tier 9s with the lacking penetration for the premium, whenever you're top tier, this tank is basically a standalone. Being able to pull out 3,000 damage a match if played correctly, or even 2,000 damage a match. It's just one of those tanks that within the first three shots, if they all penetrate, you're already looking at between 1,400 to 1,800 damage. And it, it, it's just a fantastic tank. There's a lot of tier 8 premiums, a lot of tier 7 tanks, 5, 6, that, that are just overall really good tanks when played correctly. Now, later in the future, I'll try and get an ace tanker out with this tank. Probably no commentary behind that replay. Maybe some commentary. But until then, you guys have a wonderful day. And if you can, get your hands on the 50TP prototype. This tank is totally worth it.